Good day to you friends from sunny Santa Barbara. It's a gorgeous day here and I wanted to record a video about something that uh, I've been meaning to talk about for a while, which is a tool in my strategy toolbox called prerequisite trees or implementation trees. These come from the logical thinking processes associated with Eliyahu Goldratt of Theory of Constraints fame. And um, these are invaluable to me practically <coughs> for doing project management. And something I've said before is like, well, I, I believe everybody has a vow, something like a life purpose. And I believe in that in the people I encounter, but you can know I really believe in you if I start ranting at you about prerequisite trees and telling you, you need to learn these. <laughs> like, let's go. Um, these are good for complicated projects or goals that you want to achieve, which have, you know, multiple steps. Often you have some kind of blocker or headache associated with it, where it's like, ooh, this is going to be hard. It might take months to do. Um, it might be very involved. And in that situation where there's some complicated project or goal that I want to work towards, and there's, there's multiple steps over time, and there's sort of blockers, I've got some kind of ug field or headache around it, that's when I reach for a prerequisite tree. And I want to tell you about those today. I wrote an article about it for Tiago and Forte Labs called The Prunk, Punk Strategy Guide to the Logical Thinking Processes, which you can look up. Uh, I'll put it in the notes for this. And that talks about several of the logical thinking processes, not all of them, but it does talk about prerequisite trees or implementation trees. But I'll just kind of give you the verbal download right now, which is you have some kind of goal that you're trying to achieve. Uh, maybe you want to complete a project or have some kind of thing happen. Uh, let's say you want to uh, move to a different city, for example. And that's moving is a complicated process. It takes time. You have to find um, you know, a new place. You have to move out of your old place. There's probably different things you have to handle in the process that are complicated, finding a van, you know, asking for help, whatever. And this is when you want to reach for a prerequisite tree. And basically what you're doing is making a visual diagram, a visual representation of the complexity, that's the complicatedness, not the complexity, but the complicatedness of what's already there what needs to happen for you to say, move to a new city or whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is. And there's some tools you can use for this. I use this tool called Flying Logic that was designed for the logical thinking processes. It's really nice because it changes the visual layout of the diagram as you change it in this way that's really helpful. It's expensive. I don't like their pricing model. Uh, they are They've switched to a recurring software subscription that's very expensive because they're targeting like companies and industries that have lots of money. Uh, I'm a wandering pilgrim and my friends are just people trying to help the world in the service. And so it's, I think it's not really affordable. So I can't in good faith recommend it to you, but that is what I use because I already have an older version of it that I paid for. Um, you can use Miro, formerly Real Time Board, for it. You can also just use pen and paper and like post-it notes or it doesn't really matter. Some things might be easier for you than others, but the point is to make some kind of visual representation of what you need to do to get to this goal or complete this project. And there's three kinds of nodes that are different and you're drawing dependencies between them. It's like a dependency tree. And the three kinds of node on the right side is the goal, the ultimate goal. And sometimes there's even actually a, co a couple of goals. That's why I called it the punk strategy guide to the logical thinking processes, because there's like an official way you're supposed to do it. And I don't do it that way always. You know, you get to decide how you use these things. And sometimes in, my, in practice, I find there's actually multiple goals, but ideally at least one goal, like move to a new city. And then there are milestones along the way, like, rent a moving van or box everything up in my apartment and then um, put it in the moving van and then drive to the new city and unbox it. Those are milestones along the way. They're on the critical path to 
achieving that goal or completing that project. And uh, those are sequenced. You can see there's a logical ordering to them and you can't do them out of order. There's, if you, if you, you know, put things in your new apartment before you've boxed them up or, you know, that kind of thing, it's not gonna go well. There's actually a dependency to them. And then the third kind of node, which is not obvious, is uh, an obstacle. Um, something that you're not sure about, like you need new information, or you have to research something, or you're just not sure what to do about something. These are the things that we tend to have like headaches about, that are kind of annoying to think about. They're, they bring up difficult emotions. Just noticing, oh yeah, I have an UG field about this. There's some kind of obstacle here. And putting that in the diagram and showing which ones it's connected to is extremely helpful because then you can kind of be like, oh yeah, there is this thing where I don't, you know, for example, if you're moving to another city, you could be like, I don't really know um, what I'm gonna do with this like weird crystal goblet that my aunt gave me 10 years ago that's sentimental, but I just don't know what to do with it because I don't really want it in the new city. Um, that's, that's an obstacle of some kind, uh, just to give a simple example. And you note those down as well. And you note, you write down all of the obstacles, milestones, and the goal or goals, and you put them in this diagram. And then you write down the dependencies between them. You draw lines between them. And for a complicated project, there might be a lot of these nodes and they'll have very complicated interrelationships, but you can actually track them. And you can actually, on a, on a subjective somatic phenomenological level, you can watch the body relaxing as you just represent the complexity, the complicatedness that's already there. It's like, oh, oh, like you're not directly solving the problem yet, but you're externally representing all of this complicated uck feeling that was already in your body mind. And that's already a service. But then practically what that allows you to do is <clears throat> To notice, if you do it from left to right, where the goal is on the right, the milestones are in the middle, and then obstacles, some obstacles are at various points in the diagram, mostly on the left side, there are going to be some nodes that are milestones that don't have any dependencies. It's like the very first thing I could do is call the U-Haul company and ask what their prices are, you know, for example, before you even rent the van. Um, and that's a thing you can do today or tomorrow as soon as possible that doesn't depend on anything else that's going to move the project forward. And so it's clear, oh, this is my next action from a sort of GTD productive productivity stance. Like this is the thing I need to do next. It's not depending on anything else. And you can also start to look at the obstacles and be like, well, what do I do about that? You can journal about it. You can think about it. You can ask a friend, you can do some research. And usually a solution emerges it's like, yeah, I think I want to do this. And then it's no longer an obstacle and you can do the next actions. And the really, exciting thing about this how to put it okay so actually i mentioned tiago earlier i worked for him for a while and what he hired me to do initially was to move his blog from medium to wordpress and when he hired me he said you know i don't even know if you can do this i don't know if this is possible but i want to try it and i'll give you i forget how much time but like three or six months or something to see if this is even possible and it's okay if you can't do it and i made a prerequisite tree for this and I ended up being able to do it in something like a month. Like, I don't remember the exact timelines. This was, you know, five or six years ago at this point. But I did it, I, not only did I do it, and I did it well, but I did it much faster than any of us expected because I could just do the next actions and then move them forward. And the whole thing, because I was moving along the critical path, just went a lot quicker than anyone would have expected. And for me, this process of making a prerequisite tree is so valuable when I'm doing a complicated multi-stage, you know, multi-week or multi-month project because one, it, it represents what's complicated about it so that I relax in my body and also it's easier to collaborate with people because we're like, yeah, this is exactly how complicated it already is. And then it allows you to act in this logical way. It's like, yep, this is what's next. This is what's next. This is what's next. Um, there are probably other ways of getting the same kind of benefit, other kind of project management techniques, but this one has worked really well for me. And if you're doing any kinds of service projects or, you know, any projects of any kind that are complicated, multi-stage, take time over months, 
maybe are collaborating with other people, I can't recommend prerequisite trees or implementation trees from the logical thinking processes highly enough. All right, take care, friends.